we often run into customers who have this fear of giving away their secret sauce. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, but if we tell them, then they're going to do it. I'm like, no, no. If you, if you're, what you do is genuinely interesting and different, there's no way they can replicate it. Exactly. And they really don't want to. Mm. Join me for The Claw as I talk with Stella Huffman. She's responsible for social media at Liker Partners. And we're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about how you can get your customers to love your brand by showing them love. So tune in for tips and techniques on how to attract new customers and followers to your brand on this edition of The Claw. Welcome to The Claw. I'm Eric Holtzclaw, Chief Strategist at Liker Partners. The Claw is the podcast for marketing C-suite executives. Today, I am joined by a regular attendee to The Claw, a regular guest, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, Stella Huffman. She's responsible for our social media team here at Liger, and we always get lots and lots of questions about social media, because that's the thing that draws people in it's the you know the place that you're going to make people know who you are and you know drive awareness and Stella likes to show up at holidays <laughs> I'm the holiday queen you are <laughs> do, you, do you decorate a lot at the house um so that's funny because I actually don't decorate too much and yeah. especially in a one-bedroom apartment there's not <laughs> not a lot of room for decoration right now yeah. but I love the holidays and I love thinking about all the ways you can utilize the holidays this past Christmas, we were pretty bah humbug. We didn't even put our tree up. Yeah. Which really sucks. We got a little grump tree from Trader Joe's that was like this, and it like folded over, and it had uh, one ornament, so it was nice. it was kind of perfect. Kind of Charlie Brown. Yep, yeah. it was a Charlie Brown yeah. tree. Yeah. So she's here because the big holiday for love is coming up. Mm-hmm. And social media is a lot about, you know, both hopefully having customers love you, but also there's ways you can show them love Absolutely. over social media. And, I, and that two-way conversation is missed often yes. by companies. It is very much what you give out, you will hopefully receive and return. Um, and a lot of people, I think, expect just the return without mm-hmm. actually doing their portion to give out. So I definitely, I think Valentine's Day as a whole, like you said, showing love, there's ways to show love, and then hopefully you will receive that love well, as well. Well, and starting that way. So if you can show some love out, then exactly. maybe, because you know, we're always, your know, clients are like, why aren't people following us? Why aren't they like, well, what have you, what have you done for the customer or exactly. for the client? Yeah. Exactly. So what are some of your tips? So I have a couple tips, and very much these can be used across the board throughout the year. Dip, you know, for different holidays as well. Oh, you mean we should show love more than just at Valentine's we Day? We should show love all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but Valentine's Day is such a significant, it's kind of turned into that commercialized uh, mm-hmm. holiday. So this is kind of a good way for a business to play into it. Of course, customer appreciation. Mm. You definitely want to be showing that throughout the year, all the time, not just Valentine's Day. But for Valentine's Day, that's something that you can lean into. Um that's really important. You definitely want to make sure that your customers know that they are appreciated. Um, So you can do that through social media. You can do that through promo codes with email. Um, You know, there's so many ways giving them a shout out. There's so many ways that you can do that. And and there's a company that uh, I've bought firewood from before. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's called, I think I should know this. That's sad. (laughs) Cutting edge. I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. And, I found them on social media Uh and we were having the, we kind of do a, an annual Halloween party at our Uh house. And, um, I found them on social media. The party was like two days away. I sent them something over social media and I ended up buying from them. They sent me a handwritten note. Yeah thanking me for buying that's what I was gonna say them. cards and then I was like I don't even know how many people will actually write handwritten cards but yeah. I feel like when you get a handwritten card oh. these days that is meaningful yeah literally kept it yeah. I kept it and the other day I was like why did I keep this for like two <laughs> years <laughs> I bought firewood from them. We're not in a relationship or anything. But, but that's awesome. Yeah. And they do a good job of continuing to follow up. It sort, you know, they know when it's going to be cold and they're like, yeah. hey, you know, do you want something else? And you always remember it. Exactly. The other thing they did is they delivered it the next, I ordered it at 11 o'clock and it was at my house by 11 o'clock the next day. Wow. 
that's crazy. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. And like I said, you know, emails, because when you're in elementary school, the big day was everyone brings candy with the Valentine's cards mm-hmm. and you all exchange them. And you had so, to be really careful that you didn't sh- overly show yes, emotion to someone. Yes, you are very correct. But I, I, I will always remember, you know, making your shoebox and everyone putting. So like <laughs> the card, the email, you can turn that into, you know, digital since, like I said, I don't think very many people use handwritten uh, no. notes and cards nowadays, no, but, but nice it makes you surprise. memorable if you do, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, creating content about self-love, self-worth, and um, self-care can be good as well. You know, not just creating content about Valentine's Day, but, you know, Valentine's Day is about love and self-worth and care and love is so, so important. So that can be something that, you know, kind of gives you that emotional tie uh, mm-hmm. to your audience, as well as you can create targeted uh, campaigns that can be through email, that can be giving out promotional items, that could be, you know, discounting your most popular items. Kind of depends on what company you are, but that's something that you can utilize throughout the year, but also around holidays, you know, really leaning into the holiday and promotions and sales. I feel like that's the time. Like I said, Valentine's Day has become commercialized, so everyone's out there looking to get that gift for their coworker or their significant other or their mom, dad, sister, whoever. So everyone's out there looking to buy something yeah. right now. And tying into that, you know, the self-love, if you've got a product that is uh, something that people would exactly. buy to, you know, kind of for themselves, mm-hmm. you know, that. Treat I, yourself. I love a reason to buy something for exactly. myself. Which is why everyone hates me at the holidays <laughs> because there's literally nothing you can buy me. I probably bought it, right? Exactly. I, I'm put on like November 15th. The family's like, don't buy anything. <laughs> if there's something you want, put it on a list uh-huh. so we can buy. But I'm like, but, but, but. And they're like, nope, nope. If you're very hard to buy for, just put it on the list. Give it to us. I'm like, fine. <laughs> and then the you were so you're talking about in the second point about the uh kind of like the self-love but then you talked about oh yeah the following yeah mm-hmm. and that is such a it's kind of an easy thing to do very easy yeah, it's kind of like the minimal thing well it is but it's also surprisingly you know, i think it's the one pushed to the back burner as yeah, well right yeah, well, really smart companies do it and do it mm-hmm. very well because you get followed by something forever to the point that you're like, I have to buy that now, uh-huh. you know? Um, so it, getting into those technologies and realizing you're not going to get everything just from organic. Exactly. What When maybe people, I just use the word organic. So what's the difference between kind of organic and, and using some targeting? So with targeting, you know, that's paying for ads, that's paying to get your stuff out there in front of a certain audience that you are handpicking. And then organic can be anything from someone just seeing a sign of your company or hearing word of mouth and they're looking you up organically. Yeah. And, um, you know, because when we start working with companies and they haven't really done a lot on social media, they don't have a lot of love. Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> they're no. needing to give out all uh, the love. Uh huh. Yeah, they're gonna have you have to pay for a little love, yep. right? Like you're gonna have to put some th- some messages out there and things like that. And you have to be very careful that that message has something in it for the person. Exactly. I, I always see comments when someone puts an ad up, and then you'll see in the comments, I don't even know what is this. Uh-huh. Like, why would I click on it? And if you're getting that kind of feedback, you need to rethink that strategy. Exactly. Exactly. You definitely want somebody to know immediately when they're scanning and they see like your ad or your product, what that is and how that could benefit them. You don't want to leave them questioning because it's so easy to just scroll past and Uh, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Make sure, make me, make me take notice. Exactly. Exactly. You want it to pop. You want it to pop. Craig's going to hurt you. <laughs> Craig's <laughs> one of our creatives. That's one of his least favorite things. <laughs> when his client says that, it's like... I want it to pop. Okay. You should define what pop means. Um, catches my eye. Okay. In a meaningful way. Yes. A meaningful but I, way. But I'm sure the clients, when they tell Craig they want something to pop, they don't really know no, what, what they yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, I want it to be this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The... The uh, and visceral reaction, like Mm -hmm. you know, make me angry, make me cry, make me mad, make me happy, inspire me, something, but don't just do what everybody else is doing because you might as well not do it. Exactly, you don't want it to blend in with everyone else. You don't want to see someone to see something and not know that 
that's your brand, you know, get it confused with somebody else. You want to be unique. Yeah. Absolutely. So then, of course, this is kind of something that you can play into with any holiday, but like a Valentine's Day challenge. This could be, you know, if you um, work in food or restaurant or um, health and, hey, maybe weekly you're giving out a recipe and you're asking your audience, hey, if you give this a try, take a picture of it, tag me in it. How did you like it? Um, giving them kind of like this challenge that's interact like physically interacting, um, even though they might have seen it on the web, um, as well as tips and tricks to educate your audience. You know, it's always something nice. I follow a lot of people who I, you know, might not really know what their business is, but they're constantly giving a bunch of different tips and tricks that I can kind of keep in my back pocket. Um, so that's something too as well. And like I said, the interactive part can come into play of, hey, if you tried this, you record it, take a picture of it, tag us, let us know how you liked it. Um, that's something fun that can also, like I said, be utilized throughout the year. But specifically with Valentine's Day, maybe it's making um, certain Valentine's Day crafts or different Valentine's Day foods, heart-shaped cookies. I don't know. There's yeah. so many different things that you can play into. But that's something kind of fun and can get your audience kind of really hands-on with your content. Yeah, and the, uh, it reminds me of one of the examples when we were in deep in the uh, pandemic and the lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people weren't traveling, they weren't going to hotels. And Doubletree, which if you've ever stayed at a Doubletree hotel, you get, they give you warm cookies when you check in. Nice, you know, little were chocolate Were they chip sending cookies. out warm cookies? Whoa, they were, they gave out their the recipe. recipe. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah, so they basically said, we know that you guys can't travel, You, we miss you, you miss us. Yeah, this is a good comfort food, so they gave out the recipe for the double tree. Yeah, chip cookie. that's exactly that's exactly what I was talking about. Like yeah. something like that is so awesome, especially um, I, now that you mentioned that. You know, I see I saw a bunch of restaurants that you know had to close down, and maybe they had a secret sauce that everybody loved, or um, like you said, a dessert or a cookie, and they were willing to you know share their secret because they knew that people couldn't come in, and that was just a way for them to keep their name out there and stay relevant during a time where nobody was going out. And the secret for those is that sometimes they don't give out the full recipe. But you think you have You, you think it. you got it. But you you're you like, I didn't ever really make it exactly because uh -huh. there's like a spot, you know, there's a, a some cinnamon that uh -huh. they didn't tell you that they typically put into exactly. the recipe. That's the, if you ever watch like diners, drive-ins and, you know, they're One like, and then we pour shows. this in and they mm -hmm. don't tell you what it is. So that's the thing that makes it taste so good. Yep. So... But it got them connected, you know, I don't think they did this, but it would have been great to if anybody, you know, shared, you know, pictures of them, they could have entered them into a drawing to come yeah. for a hotel study later or things like that. So exactly. Th we often run into cu customers who have this fear of giving away their secret sauce. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, but if we tell them, then they're going to do it. I'm like, no, no. If you, if you're, what you do is genuinely interesting and different there's no way they can replicate it. Exactly. And they really don't want to. Mm -mm. But, well, if you're me, you don't. Like, I'm a convenience <laughs> guy. I'm like, oh, you just do it. I'll buy it. There exactly. Go, right? All right. Well, we're going to go to a commercial break. Awesome. And you have a few more. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm sure you do. So I, I think <laughs> I said, hey, let's come up with like 15, 14 of these. So anyway, so you're listening to The Call. I'm talking today with Stella Huffman. She is responsible for our social media team and likes to join me around the holidays <laughs> <laughs> to talk about how your brand can be more loved by showing love. We'll be back in just a minute. Thanks so much for watching the Claw Podcast. We'll be back after this short break. When I first met the Unicorn Marketing Agency, Everything was rainbows and, well, unicorns. They promised overnight marketing results for my business, leads my sales team couldn't keep up with. Once I signed up with them, they didn't even hold up any of their promises, even after months. And the only thing they gave me were excuses. After a while, communication with them became spotty and they were hard to get a hold of. Eventually, they stopped responding altogether. Overall, I lost a total of about $23,000 over a four month period. I lost a lot of valuable time and energy.
And we're back. You're listening to The Claw. I'm Eric Holtzclaw, Chief Strategist at Liger Partners, and I'm joined by one of my regular guests, Stella Huffman. Stella, is it, do, you, do you like the studio? Or is I it love just, it. Okay, I'm really hi. happy to be back. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> awesome. Well, your content, people always love to hear from you because you're talking about a topic that some people, so people think they get social media. Like we joke and say people think, everyone thinks they're a marketer. Yep. Like everybody does, but everybody thinks they get social they media. Do. Because they're like, well, I can bring out my phone and do it. I can take a picture. Yeah. You can also cook, too. But you may not cook as well as the five-star restaurant. Exactly. (laughs) So, so yeah. So there's some some ways that that gets perfected. Exactly. And even if you know social media, you can always expand upon it. You can always find new tricks and learn new things. I mean, I'm learning something new every day. So I, I love talking about it. Well, and in our world, you know, where some of the companies we work with are companies that are trying social media. They're only trying it for their brand. Mm -hmm. And the fun thing about Liger is we get to experiment across lots of different platforms and, you know, companies and products. Even we tell people Liger is an experimental brand. So we'll try something that other people aren't trying. Exactly. Just to see how it works. And And that is social media. That's social media. You're Mm -hmm. having to experiment all the time. You don't know what's going to work. You know, you might, try something and you're going into it saying, oh, this is going to be awesome. And maybe it doesn't perform that well. So then you're always coming back. How could I do it better? What was I missing? Like, what more do we need to do to get this thing rocking and rolling the way that we felt like it was going to perform? Yeah. And you need to be on the front end of it. So there's, so I'm going to, I know that we've done this with clients and it's not that it's inappropriate anymore, but there's like the the LinkedIn survey thing. It's kind of overdone. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of tired of the leaking, and so are a lot of other people, mm-hmm. right? But it was—it's been great for a period of time, but then it stops being great, and you have to be very careful about the trends you're following. Exactly, and, there's yeah. always new trends coming into play, so you kind of yeah. have to stay on top of the new ones because you don't—you don't, don't want to be the old one. I, I'm laughing because it's like the, uh, the song glamorous uh, no. by Fergie. My dad found it about four years after she put it out and thought it was the best thing ever. And I'm like, you're a, this you're is a little the bit best too late story ever. You're a little okay, bit too ahead. late. Yes. So you don't want to be that person who's finding the trend too late. Yeah. I was accidentally using the wrong term on Slack yesterday too. So you just have to be very careful. It exactly. was not good. I was abbreviating and didn't know it was bad. <laughs> So, it's all right. We all make mistakes. Yeah, because I don't watch Jersey Shore, and I'm not going to apologize for that. I do watch other things, but I don't watch Jersey Shore. Okay, so we are talking today about how to get customers to love you mm-hmm. on social media, because yep. that's really the goal for most businesses, is they want the customer to love them. Yes. But in order to receive love, you must you give, give love. Exactly. So we're talking about some ways that you can give love back to your customers. Yeah. So, um, another way that you can utilize coming up, we've got uh, Valentine's day is straight up Valentine's day, social media posts. And so that can be, so I can just lean right into just the holiday. lean so wow. hard into Valentine's day. Okay. And that can be, I have a little surprise. You do. Anything, like you can just add little hearts into the picture, into your setting. Um, Not going to give away anything we've done for a client, but, you know, maybe Valentine's Day, you think of date night, you think of chocolate, you think of alcohol, like wine. Get a little picture set up for that and just incorporate some, got these from the dollar store, just something, just (laughs) something that, you know, shows, shows that Valentine's Day red, pink, white hearts so then when you post it on valentine's day people know okay this this is your valentine's day post as well as um like i said earlier like promotions i'm thinking small brands i'm thinking um restaurants i know in columbia there's a new small business called the donut guy he makes donuts you could make heart donuts for valentine's day and promote it i mean dunkin donuts does it so you know Let's let's stay on board with what the big guys are doing. Um, yeah, but you do have to be careful about this, though. So I've got a couple points. Yes. Now, one, number one, I got excited because I thought you were going to bring out chocolate, but you oh, did not. I almost grabbed the Dove chocolates. I and know, see, because we have out. Dove chocolates right now that are heart shaped. Mm-hmm. So, and I love Dove chocolate, and I really thought you're about to give me a Dove well, chocolate. Well, I'm sorry, my surprise okay. was not. I was like, their hearts coming out. They're Dove chocolates. <laughs> no, they're not. So then, we went to 
Benihana's one time. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even mention it. We went to a restaurant that cooks (laughs) like Japanese food. And it was around uh, Valentine's Day. The rice. They turned it into a heart. Into a heart. I don't think you should do that. Okay. Because he like made it beat. Yes. When they put the spatula. Yeah. It's terrible. It's a terrible You didn't like it? No. Okay. No. It's way. No. No. Well, then how about this? Sugar Shane's Cookie Place. Amazing. Based in Atlanta. Could do something like a pink cookie, a red cookie, red velvet. Play into that. Just no Play fried into the rice. Colors. That looks like no a fried heart. rice that beats like a heart. <laughs> but maybe like heart sprinkles, or you know, really or maybe, playing maybe in. Maybe your favorite cookie place should be doing hearts. Yes, um, I'm sure that Crumble Cookies will be doing hearts. <laughs> she was not but, shy. But to I tell will you. say, <laughs> Sugar Shane's is better than Crumble Cookies. Oh, mm-hmm. is it? Where it is Sugar really Shane's? Is. So Sugar Shane's is actually in downtown, but they're opening a new location in Sandy Springs. So <sighs> I'm sure we will have some oh, in the office. Oh, wow. But yeah, those are just a couple that I'm thinking food and the way that you can just play into it. Like I said, um, if you're a hotel, create a little date night pack package Mm -hmm. um with a bottle of champagne or something entice people i mean it is date night valentine's day is date night so that's the year the my anniversary for open table you know like when we joined Mm -hmm. open table was on valentine's day yeah because we were out trying to find somewhere to eat Uh uh-huh and we're like good grief all these people because we've married forever right we're like where are they out oh it's it's valentine's (laughs) day Day. and so when every february 14th (laughs) Because I like brought up open table. I'm like, we got to find a reservation. This is ridiculous. So, yeah. So, yeah. Think about how your business can play into Valentine's Day because there is a way people are looking to buy things. People are looking to go out on dates. People are looking for the pink, for the reds, for yeah. the fun things that they can. Like I said, you know, maybe it's not um, a part, a life partner. Maybe it's a coworker or right. your best friend or your mom or your grandma or your sister. So there's there's ways to go about it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. What else you got? Awesome. So kind of following off of that, play into your partnerships. Um, You know, a lot of businesses partner with other businesses. Show them love. You know, y'all are in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So you can play off of that onto social media. Um, Like I said, that kind of piggybacks off what I just talked about. Yeah. Anytime you do like a acquisition, that's a fun thing to do. Or if you are working really closely with someone, then that's a a great way to kind of play off of that. Yeah. And show them love, tag them in things. So your followers can follow them and, th- and they'll do the same. Usually like when you give the love, you'll receive the love back. Yeah. That, that is, that's something that gets missed so often when we're talking to companies about their strategy is don't just do, you know, like sh- shared services or whatever. you also need to promote across cause they, there's two sets of organic, you know, audiences you can get to and you're bringing them together and kind of spreading them across. Exactly. Yeah. Um, giving back to your community that, you know, that's a great way to show love just in general to your community. Um, I think I've talked about this on every single (laughs) holiday edition and that can be year round as well. But, um, with Valentine's day, maybe you are promoting one of your best products or your new products and it's at a discounted price and maybe you're giving the difference or what you, um, what you're uh, getting from sales somehow back to the community and that can be, you know, chosen um, at a company level, whatever feels best for y'all. Um, you know, maybe it could be given to the homeless. It could just be giving to another charity that, like I said, that's up to y'all, but that's something that's so easy and also really gives your company that personable feel mm-hmm. and, you know, they care. <laughs> right. They care. Well, and it's the connections into the people who participate in some of those types of things. So it's a, uh, you know, we are partner with Atlanta Women's Foundation, mm-hmm. and that works really. A lot of our clients are women, mm-hmm. and we participated in their events and done things, and that's a great partnership for us. Because, exactly. And if you've looked at the picture of the company, there's a lot of women. <laughs> lighter. So yeah, so it's a good one for us to connect to and make sure that uh, we're contributing back to that community. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. They do so much good for the Atlanta area. Yeah. Um, getting followers to share their love stories, you know, Ah, that's just a little bit of engagement fun. Maybe there's people who met at work and then they ended up getting married or something. Just, it's kind of cheesy, kind of hallmarky, but that is something that you can play into. Yeah. Mine and April, my wife's first date was to the Olive Garden. Yeah. So, you know, Olive Garden, she's like, have us in for dinner again. Exactly. And maybe it, maybe if you shared that story mm. and you tagged Olive Garden, 
then maybe you get Olive Garden like free for life or something. So this tells you how old we are. So it was <laughs> Look Who's Talking came out. Uh huh. So we went to the movies to Look I Who's don't Talking. Know what that okay, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Bruce Willis. It's a classic. I'll have to that. go watch. Yes. It. Now they did like a Look Who's Talking Two, a Look Who's Talking okay, Three. So they kept going. Only and they should have the stopped, first one? right? Okay. But I think the second year we went and saw Look Who's Talking Two. Uh huh. And went to the Olive Garden again. So how cheesy is that? It's great. No, it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. That should be a commercial. They should make that into commercial. They should. They really should. Yeah. We'll, we'll reach we'll out. We'll make to it them. happen. Okay. But yeah, we kind of touched on card cards. Handwritten cards are very rare nowadays. So. Um, if you want to impress someone, obviously it impressed me with your story. So handwritten cards, emails will do, um, gift cards or something easy. Not Starbucks right now because no. they are closed. They're closed. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the last thing that you can play into. Obviously, all of these can be twisted for different holidays, but I think Valentine's Day, um, the card is real. When I like I said, when I think of Valentine's Day, I'm thinking about the candy and the little. Uh, like Cartoon Network cards that we would get um, oh, yeah. and everyone was like like I remember coming to class and like some person had like brought the same card pack that I had I and know. I was so upset it's always I disappointing like, I wanted... or if you gave each other the exactly. same card exactly exactly like so yeah. candy cards yeah. fun gift yeah. cards anything like that felt hearts can make anything or real better chocolate ones real time. chocolate dove hearts yeah. I, I should have grabbed the, <laughs> the dove i'm so upset with myself <laughs> well we use a platform here called thanks it's thnks yeah. and that platform allows us as we are talking with a client or we know they've had like a rough day and we can send them a virtual gift mm -hmm. and then they can either redeem it for the actual gift or they can give it to charity that's and awesome it's a really nice i didn't know that part of it i know um you know, if someone was sick or if someone, you know, had a passing in their family, that's something just so kind and yeah. lets us know you're thinking about them. But that's awesome to know that, you know, if maybe, hey, I already have this or, hey, maybe I don't need this, but somebody else does that you can uh, redeem it for if, charity. if you give somebody who, so we may have sent an alcoholic gift to a recovering alcoholic and oh, they could then, yeah, man. give it to donate it. So it allows you to <laughs> donate it, right? <laughs> she didn't have to accept the gift. So yeah. So making the sure thought, there's some options. It was the thought that yeah, you have counted. to be careful about that. Yeah. Yes, so. very much so. So thanks so much for joining me today. And thanks for having me. Those were some great tips. I appreciate you uh, spending some time in the studio with me. Thanks. This yeah. was so much fun. I always love being a part of your podcast. It's really a highlight of my week. Yes, it's always great to have Stella in the studio. She is responsible for our social media team here at Liger Partners. You've been listening to The Claw. Uh, we talked today about how you can use social media to show love to your customers and then get love in return if you want to get more follows and comments and things like that. Uh, make sure to tune in next time to The Claw. Thank you so much for tuning in to The Claw Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe, rate and review this podcast. And if you or someone you know wants to make an appearance on this show, email us at yourbestie at ligerpartners.com.